Thank you so much. Um, this is joint work with uh, Ji Sung, and I also want to acknowledge uh, funding both from PIM and from the Central Asia program here at IFPRI. Um, great, so I'm going to be presenting on the effects of income fluctuations on rural health and nutrition. And the research question, if I can dive right in, that we're examining with this paper is, how do household income fluctuations in Kyrgyzstan affect health and nutrition outcomes? And in particular, how do these vary across genders and across the life cycle? So the primary outcomes that we'll be considering here are health and nutrition outcomes for young children. Um, we're looking at one through five-year-olds for some specific reasons um, uh, related to the, the lags in, in, in our um, income variables here. And then also older children and adolescents as well as adults. And we'll break adults up a little bit between youth and older people. Um, I will be in the older person category myself, being over 35, um, but we'll kind of break that down a little bit and show you what's going on. We try to also look at mechanisms. Why is it that fluctuations in income would, would affect uh, health and nutrition outcomes? Um, and in particular, we dive in to look a little bit at consumption, dietary diversity, uh, time use, which is, is, is one investment you can make in young children's health. Um, as well as contraceptive and fertility patterns and health expenditures. So I'll try and present a little bit of that, uh, time permitting here. So to just jump into it, should I run out of time, um, we find that declines in household income tend to significantly reduce the heights of young children, um, particularly for girls and increase stunting rates in girls as well. They also lower BMI among older children and adolescents. Um, but what we find is that reductions in income simultaneously may have some positive effects in that they can reduce BMI weight and the incidence of overweight among adults. Um, we find that these reductions in income tend to reduce consumption of foods. In the process, they tend to reduce the diversity of diets and they uh, tend to reduce consumption of healthy foods generally and healthy dietary diversity. Um, but we also find that when incomes goes down, people are more likely to use contraceptives. They're less likely to want to have a child in the next year, um, and they're less likely to become pregnant. So I'll present some of those results as well. Um, and we also see reductions in health expenditures. So there's several channels here that might be, um, that might be active. So what's the motivation? Um, in a 10-minute presentation, you won't get enough of it. But basically, poor households tend to underinsure against income fluctuations. Uh, we know that there are strong correlations between income and health that are, that are undeniable. Causality is the perennial concern here, right? So there's a lot of great experimental literature, quasi-experimental literature that gets around these, this challenging causality problem by looking at things like extreme weather events, major recessions, financial crises, um, randomized cash transfers. But you have, of course, the typical um, issues you can have with randomized controlled trials or major large events is ex uh, external validity concerns. Um, we really want to know what happens with day-to-day -day fluctuations in income as well, right? Outside of uh, populations that happen to be targeted by cash transfer programs or, or are around a cutoff for getting one, or aside from people exposed to a very extreme event um, that probably affects a host of other things as well. Um, so we're going to um, present a little bit of what we do to try to identify causality in this paper. Uh, but again, the focus is more on day-to-day -day fluctuations, um, and we're going to be looking at um, changes in sources of income. The context we're considering here is Kyrgyzstan. It is a landlocked, mountainous, uh, low-income until 2014 country um, at, in Central Asia. Um, it's got high rates of earned internal and international migration. We've got other work um, looking at the impacts of, of some of these same income shocks on migration and the gendered impacts on them, but I'll report today on health. All right, so we have a great data source, which is the Kyrgyzstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan Integrated Household Survey. This is a rolling panel data set. Um, median household is in this survey for about four years. so. Sadly, we do not have data on every household in every year, but we have this rolling panel from 2004 to 2016. So it allows us to look at a, at a, a fairly longer than many studies time period of what income fluctuations are doing to child health. 
um, we are going to deal with uh, trying to identify causal, re causal relationships between income and health by using a Bartik instrument for total income. And particularly, we look at seven different sources of income, crop production, livestock sales, meat produ production, um, uh, hunting and gathering, processed food. And we also look at some of the costs um, of this production, um, crop production, livestock rearing costs. And we're basically going to look at the share of an individual's income that's comprised of each of these particular sources in their first year in the data set. And then we're going to look at uh, region-wide changes in um, income from these various sources over time. So we're going to basically be predicting people's um, income in each year based on their past um, their past income income use, and we'll be controlling for that in, regre in the regression and trying to predict out what's going to happen with, with income going forward. Um, so fair, fairly standard um, uh, use of a Bartik instrument here. Um, moving on, I mentioned already in the preview of the results some of our outcomes, but we're looking at young children, older children, and adults' health um, anthropometrics and health outcomes. Um, and we're going to be including year fixed effects, region fixed effects, rural dummies, um, initial levels of these various dependencies on types of income, their interactions with time trends. Results are not particularly um, sensitive to them, but we're also, um, we show results with and without a host of individual and household controls. Um, we're including these individual controls in all regressions <laughs> that are anthropometric, anthropometric uh, results. All right, so what we see from this slide is we've got a strong first stage. So you predict your income well, um, even when uh, in our econometric specification here, F statistics above 50 generally here in different populations. We have a little bit of a different strength of the first stage, but generally uh, this positive relationship, if we predict your income is going to be higher, your income is generally a, a bit higher. All right, so moving into some of the regressions, um, I'm going to be presenting um, OL. Uh, 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 second stage um, results here from our um, using our Bartik instrument. Um, please check the paper for OLS results. Um, so what we're finding uh, um, here, we're looking at two time periods. First, we're looking at one year after the income is measured, what's happened to anthropometrics, and then we look at two years later so we can see which, um, what is the effect of a, of a reduction in income in one year, a year later, as well as two years later. So is this a persistent effect, or if income returns to normal, do you kind of see that these, these um, measures, these outcome variables are also um, no longer affected? And what we find is that we're seeing that um, if you see a, a, a reduction in income, we're having these reductions in height. Um, or having them actually get even stronger um, further down the road, as one might ex expect. It takes time to change height, even in very young children. Um, you see no overall results here for uh, stunting, so it would appear not much impact on stunting. But we do find that among girls, we're seeing some um, stronger effects. Um, income fluctuations seem to impact girls a bit more than they impact boys, and we're seeing that there's some, you know, possibly more weak at the 10% level of significance, but um, reductions in stunting um, when you have higher income, and therefore increases in stunting when you have lower income. Um, so then we wanted to look at older children. Um, so this um, regression here is looking at uh, individuals ages 5 to 18, and we're seeing that um, uh, as not much going on with height and weight here, but we are seeing kind of overall that the reduction in income um, seems to be lowering body mass index of children in this age group, not much impact on overweight or obesity. But now let's look at adults here. Um, here is youth, eight, 18 to 35 year olds. And here we're seeing a little bit more activity um, in terms of the first panel here is 18 to 35, the bottom bottom rows is those um, over 35, and we're seeing that there seems to be some, um, when you have reductions in income, reductions in um, BMI and incidence of overweight in um, older individuals, especially those in this aging demographic of over 35 year olds. The, the older people like me, you see these reductions in income seem to be actually um, reducing people's waistlines and um, reducing incidence of overweight. Um, we see that uh, a reduction in income tends to reduce healthy dietary diversity and dietary diversity. Um, in the interest of time, I won't show the consumption results here, um, but uh, we're seeing more uh, consumption of vegetables and fruits um, and some uh, seafood as well in times when, when income's a little bit higher. Um, 
Nothing really interesting in time use patterns, kind of like precisely estimated zeros is almost the way I'd say this, because we have some highly significant and very meaningless results in terms of a few minutes per week of, of extra free time. Um, and then we find that there is, a, when income goes down, you're more likely to use contraception, um, and uh, two years later, less likely to be pregnant, and um, you kind of indicate a preference for fewer children. Um, a, a bit of also reductions in, in uh, health expenditure when income goes down. So in conclusion, as I noted, we see these significant impacts on uh, uh, anthropometrics for children um, and on uh, adults' um, adults' weights and uh, incidence of um, overweight later, possibly because of uh, a variety of channels that we've shown here related to consumption and expenditures. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katrina. And I'll invite the...